So let's get on with downloading wget and get it compiled. So what we need to do is go into the FTP program. Now while you're in the FTP program, it's got quite a short timeout. I think it's about 30 seconds. I don't think it's as long as a minute, but it's not not very long. Um, you may be able to change the timeout if you need to. Uh, you'd have to read the write-up for that. But uh, what you need to do is to FTP. You can either put FTP and the URL, and it's the URL of the server, not the whole URL. So I guess it's like the domain part. Um, or you can go in and type open and the destination. So in this case, it's this bit here, ftp.gnu.org. And you see we've got a connection. The name you give is an anonymous. And some FTP servers ask you to give, a, uh, they actually ask you for a password. Don't be worried by that. Generally, it used to be accepted that you give them your email address, but um, maybe privacy concerns now means that you don't. I tend to either just press enter, and if that's not allowed, then just put anonymous in again. That tends to work. Um, but as you can see in this case, uh, it's not required a password. It's just taken us straight in. So we've got an FTP prompt, as we had before, but this FTP prompt anything we type now because we're connected is going to be sent to the remote end. So the first thing we can do is type ls, you get a listing as if you're connected or, or you're looking at a local directory but remember this is the remote directory that you're connected to. So the next thing we need to do is to go down this directory hierarchy. So the first part is GNU and you can type pwd if you want to to see where you are. So similar as if you're on a bash prompt line and you can do ls there if you want to, to see what's in there. And you can see just behind the windows all the uh, directories of different tools and so on. So the next bit we need is wget. So you can type in wget and type w uh, ls there. And you can see there's all different versions here. So what we need to do is to get that this particular version 1.21.1. 1.21 is just off the screen by the looks of it because there's a newer version 1.2.1.2. So, oh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set a mode called passive mode. I don't know what, what this does exactly to the connection, but it's always been recommended. I don't understand why that is, but you can type pass, I think, sometimes, or passy or passive. A lot of these commands can be shortened. The next thing we need to type is bi for binary, puts it into binary mode rather than text only mode because we're going to download a binary. And then type in get and then the name of the file dash 1.21.1.tar.gz. And you can see it's opened it, it's actually downloading it now, and there it is, it's finished. And all we need to do is type quit and the connection gets closed. Now that downloads into the place that you ran FTP from. So if I do ls-l, you'll see it's there and I'm in the root directory. And what I want to do now is move that to, the, to a sources directory. So what I normally do is go to the sources where the LFS sources were, or are rather, and I make a directory called blfs. All right, already exists. I've already got something in there, but looks. Oh yes, because we did the uh, five hours. That's right. Uh, so that's interesting. I forgot about that. So really, I need to tick off popped uh, or check that at least, um, because if there's nothing else to be installed for popped, then I can tick it off as completed. Because if there's anything else that needs that, then I don't need to. Um, install it again. So there it is there. Let's just look at it. It's got an optional dependency of Doxygen. I'm not going to be installing that. So I'll just mark that off my list when I find my list. There it is. So we're in Chapter 9, General Libraries. So that's the first package that we've already built previously. 
that I'll cross off the list. So it means that if I'm unsure in, in the future if I build another package that needs popped, I can just check down the list and see that it has been compiled and installed. The other one is Unifont. So I'll get rid of that. Look for Unifont. Oh, is that something got downloaded? Maybe yeah, that's probably the font, isn't it? Actually, so let's look at free type then. Yeah, there it is. So this looks like this could be done with reinstallation because it's got half buzz which is recommended as well as, well as libpng and which and it says to reinstall free type after you've installed half buzz as well so let's look for chapter 10 free type and I'm just going to put an R next to that to show that I'll, I'll need to reinstall that at some point um, and I'll just go to grub Grub. Yeah, there's that font file there, Unifont. So that's not actually a package on its own, so I don't need to mark that off. But two others I need to mark off my list is EF5R and EF5 Boot Manager. I wouldn't have thought they would be used by anything else oh EF5R is obviously so basically everything under this section here on my list I can cross off because that's all complete so that is section 5 yeah end of section 5 so I'll just cross all those off I know they're done So that's fine. I'll get rid of this page now. And I've, all I've got to do now is to move from the home direct directory the wget tarball into this BLFS sources directory. And you can see it's there now. So I can extract it now. And change into it and start with the build process. So again I've got to type these in by hand it's something you have to do carefully to be sure that you are actually typing in things correctly. Uh, well, one other thing I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to export, I'll do export at the prompt for now, uh, C flags, I don't think they're set, Let's uh, let's echo it. But let's set, see what else we've got. Yeah, there's no C flags there, and also there's no uh, make flag set either. So I'm going to set all of these now for the time being, and when I come to do the configuration files for the users and so on, I'll set that information up then so it's permanent. But for now, it's going to be temporary while this bash prompt is active. So export C flags, oops, C flags equals quote, I'll use minus O2, march equals native, and pipe, I'm not going to use anything else. And I'll also use the same for CXX flags, and then also export make flags equals minus J4 for the number of cores I've got on this machine. And now I'm going to start by typing in, let's just check the directory I'm on. Yeah, I'm in wget, so configure. And you can use tab to complete the commands where necessary. Prefix equals four slash user. And I'd be very careful with this, but I've done this once before where I mistyped 
the name of the prefix and the tool got installed into the wrong location so that's worth bearing in mind uh, likewise with the sysconf dirt just be careful how you type it uh, I'll put a new line there just so it stays on the screen with SSL equals open SSL now with a lot of these packages you need to scroll down before you do the configure because there's generally other other options available that aren't used by default and they might enable or disable functionality depending as you see fit so by default for example because Valgrind is an option this uh, an optional package to install just for the test suite it's not got this option actually in the configure command by default so obviously if you had Valgrind installed and that's something I intend to do to get full coverage of the tests then um, then you'd have to come down there to remind yourself to add it in but for the default configuration that's all that's required so we'll run the configure and although technically not the first BLFS package to install it is as far as getting BF BLFS going because we'd already done grub for the UEFI boot grub and the associated EFI programs so as I say this is an Intel CPU Haswell it's a mobile I think it's a 4260 um, so it's reasonably fast it's obviously not going to be blindingly fast because it's seven years old or so but uh, we should get some fairly decent times with compiles but likewise on the large packages they're going to be several hours at a time unfortunately While that's running, I'm just going to switch to a different terminal and run top just so that I can monitor um, the CPU usage when it's compiling just to be sure that um, it is using all the cores. So we've got a quick status screen there of various options and you can see things like PSL, PCRE aren't enabled because we haven't installed those libraries. So these are things that could be uh, activated to enable further functionality within wget. So all we need to do now is to run make. So I'm going to just run a time on this. According to this it's going to take half a SBU with the tests. So it would be interesting to see. Um, I am going to run make check. I don't expect it to complete fully because there are parts missing. Uh, so we'll just see about that but I can get an idea of how long an SBU is on here I can't remember what it was originally for the bin utils but I, I don't suppose it was more than 5 or 10 minutes so that started I'll switch to the other terminal yes all the cores are active at 100% so that's good happy with that I'll close this down so it doesn't suck any more power out of the processor um, incidentally I think somebody did mention this on my channel once you can deactivate some of the mitigations in the kernel and I think there's an option mitigations equals off you can put on the kernel command line which can eke a little bit more uh, power out of the CPU because it's not doing the workarounds for the vulnerabilities within the chip um, but I've left them on uh, just for well just really can't be bothered to take them off um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it, it would make to timings but um, yeah it's, I don't think it's worth having to worry about uh, it's, it's something I might look at in the future I might do a video on it is uh, how much uh, of a time difference there is having those mitigations enabled in the kernel compared to not having them enabled uh, it could be quite interesting so this is built. I've got to run make check, but I, like I say, I don't really hold out much on it completing successfully, but it's just um, a case of being curious more than anything. It could be that it just runs a test that it can do without those other packages that are required for the tests. 
or it could be that it fails because they are missing. There's, yeah, there's some failures there, uh, loads of failures. Okay, so it's not worth running that then, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, but for now, I'm going to install the package. And I should be able to run it now. And yes, it's running, so that's good. We can now um, download packages from URLs that aren't FTP. We can use HTTP and hopefully HTTPS should be able to. Uh, so this is under section 15. I'm just going to put an R next to this to remind me to rebuild it. And I'm also going to leave this tab open, I think, for a while to remind me to that I should rebuild it as soon as I can, really. <laughs> 